Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join us here on episode 3 of the Volkswagen Golf Rebuild. After two days in the body shop, here it is, fully painted, looking ready to go. If you missed the previous episodes, here's a quick recap to run through what we've done to this car so far. As you can see, the door was dented and the wing was completely crumpled. So first thing to do was get them off and check there was no damage behind. Once the wing was off, we could check all the brackets, they were all where they were supposed to be and absolutely no damage behind. Same for the door, the door hinges hadn't moved a bit so it was as simple as just replacing the door for a new one. After some careful aligning, moving the wing back and forward and adjusting it to the perfect spec, in my opinion, the body gaps are perfect. I then dropped the car off at the body shop to get painted and that brings us nicely on to today, picking the car up from the body shop. It's been two days since we dropped it off and the door, the wing and the front bumper has been resprayed. Of course, before I could take the car away, the guys at the body shop had to give the paint a quick cut and polish. That's to take any dirt or runs out of the lacquer that they had just sprayed on. Before I get into the first proper test drive and the full price breakdown, let's make a quick stop at the car wash to have the car cleaned. And there you have it, the car's on the road now. You saw earlier we took it to the MOT station, we took it to the body shop to get painted, and now we finally get onto the first test drive. Now guys, I know this is nothing special. It's a day-to-day -day average car. But for me, it's all about buying it cheap, getting the most value out of it, and getting it on the road, driving like a brand new car. Now the clutch is feeling great. There's no knocks or bangs, there's no noises. Uh, we do need to check the brakes. So let's try that now. That works good for me. Now I'm happy with the way that the car drives. We've gone high speeds, low speeds, we've gone around corners, we've gone over bumps, there's no knocks or noises, it drives perfectly. But let's get to the most important part. How much did I pay for this car and how much did it cost to repair and get to this state? Like I said in the first episode, I bought this car from Copart, it's a salvage auction site where you can buy all sorts of damaged cars from to this, like a traditional average everyday car, to even supercars. But I won this car with the fees included £3,650. Plus the recovery on top of that, I paid £3,800. This car came from Scotland. Next, we come on to the suspension parts. That came to a total of £160 delivered to me, and that came from a breaker's yard down south. Next was the wing. The wing, unfortunately, I couldn't get in the right colour. If I could have bought it in the same colour as the existing car, that would have saved us having to paint anything. Although the bumper was scuffed, so we would have had to have painted the bumper anyway. So the wing came to £80 delivered. Next was the door. Now I did explain in episode two why I bought a complete door, but the complete door came to £180. Next we come on to small bits and pieces, like a little bracket to hold the bumper on, and the wheel trim cover that came to £35 for the two. And finally, the most expensive part of getting this car repaired was the paint. I had the front bumper painted, the wing was painted, and then they blended into the passenger door. That came to £320. So buying and rebuilding this Golf cost me a total of £4,575. But let's see how that compares to similar cars that haven't been damaged that are on the market today. Loading up Auto Trader, filtering to cars that are similar to mine, and let's have a look. Sorting from lowest to highest, that shows us the cheapest car on the market that is similar to ours is £8,795. And it's just up from there, looking at £9,000 at the next cheapest one. So the only difference between my car and these that are on the market for £9,000 
is that mine's recorded at category N. Even considering, I think my car would still be worth £6,000 on the market today. That would be a very cheap price. And with that price, we've got a potential profit of £1,425. Now, I'm not sure about you, but for me, that's not bad for one week's worth of work. Buying a salvaged car from auction is always a risk, and this golf was no different. So many people take this risk with the mindset of getting a cheap car, a car that you couldn't attain on the open market at such a value. So I think I should take this opportunity to share what I looked out for when bidding for this car. Starting with the auction, like I said, it's sight unseen, you get a few pictures on the website and it goes to the highest price bid. With there being such a range of damaged cars on websites such as Copart or Salvage Market, the first thing I do is decide what car do I want. In this case, it was a Volkswagen Golf. Then once I've chosen the car, I have to look into whether it's a private entry, so a car that somebody's entered into the auction and they own, or if it's a genuine insurance write-off vehicle. I like to stay away from private entries. I know you can get a bargain buying a private entry, but I tend to stick to genuine insurance entries. If you'd like more detail on how I decide if a car is a private entry or a genuine insurance write-off, drop a comment below and I'll be happy to go into that for you. Once I found the car that I wanted and understand that it's a genuine insurance write-off, I then start setting a budget. So in this case, I saw that the car is worth around £6,000 once complete and then I worked backwards. So I made a rough guide on what the parts are going to cost me and what the paint's going to cost me and then eventually setting a little margin for myself. That brings us on to transport. Once you've won the vehicle at auction, you need to have the vehicle dropped to yourself. In my case, I have a local transport company that bought this vehicle to me. I know Copart do offer a transport service, but they tend to charge a lot more than what a local company would. So shout out to m, &M Recovery who delivered this car for me. I'll leave their number in the description box below. And I know they do nationwide recoveries from all of the Copart sites. And hey, just look at the results. After a week's worth of work, we've got this Golf on the road, driving great and looking even better. This is a brand new channel, so if you have any ideas on what you want to see next as a rebuild, let me know. Drop it down in the comment section below. But thank you very much for tuning into this video about my experience repairing my wrecked Volkswagen Golf. I'd say it's a very challenging but rewarding process and I hope you enjoyed the journey.